Today, I'm gonna to show you how to prepare an Unreal Engine render and get it ready for Fusion and DaVinci Resolve. The first thing is I have this scene here, and if you wanna learn a little bit more about camera animation, check out this, this video, and you can learn about how to animate a basic camera. But long story short, I have a little camera push through. We have this little tree in the foreground. We're moving towards this portal. And the goal is to be able to composite some footage into this little hole right here. And also we want to be able to isolate certain objects in our scene and maybe add some color grading effects to that as well. The first thing we have to do is we have to bake our camera down. Every single camera that you use in Unreal Engine, if you want to import it into other software like Blender, Cinema 4D, or DaVinci, you have to bake it down into individual keyframes on each frame. The other big thing is that if you're doing any special fancy camera effects like using an Unreal camera rail or something like that, it might not work. The best th way to think about it is keep it simple. Simple camera moves looking at nulls or basic actors will make this process easier. So so for this camera animation, I have a simple camera push through the scene with two keyframes and I have some camera shake that's made with a blueprint. To bake this camera and get all the keyframe data that we need, we're going to select the camera and we're going to click on the little wrench here and we're going to click on bake transform. We're going to set our bake key settings to all frames. We want every single frame. Click OK. It's going to make a new transform track. Now we can go into the old transform track and delete it. And then we're going to go ahead and delete the camera shake as well. Next, let's double check the camera animation by clicking on this little camera viewport thing and just watch it and make sure that it is exactly as we wanted it to because now we need to export this for DaVinci Resolve. So it looks pretty good from here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select this and I'm also gonna make a null object or a placeholder object in my scene. I'm gonna drop it exactly on where I want my footage to go. So I have this actor here in my scene and I'm gonna just zero it out and then drag it up exactly there. And the reason why is I want the orientation of this object to be as even as possible. I want this to be super simple for DaVinci Resolve to read. So with that in mind, I'm going to leave my camera and I'm going to scroll forward and put this little actor null right here. Now I'm going to take a couple steps back and remind myself that using actors in Olympics is kind of weird with DaVinci. So we're zoomed in on this actor. We're going to push it just a little bit more forward. So if we're projecting this footage in this little portal here, it's going to go exactly there. Now I will mention that sometimes Alembics and FBX exports into DaVinci and Blender can be a little funky. So another thing I'll do just to cover my bases is I will add a cube or a sphere or a basic primitive shape and I'll put it under the actor and it is important to set the cube to movable so we can parent it. And then we will reset the location. Then we will unparent it here. So now we have this footage center cube and we'll set the scale to like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This is a temporary object. We don't need this in our scene, but we want to have it as a reference point for position data. So with this object, I'm going to go ahead and drag it into my level sequencer down here. And then I have this other cube. I'm going to delete that. So now if I go into my sequencer, we can see that we have our little scene exactly as we need. Last thing I have to do is I have to go into the footage center cube and I want to go ahead and type in HID for hidden. I want to make sure that this is hidden in game so that when we render this, it's not going to be visible. If that doesn't work for you, another good thing to double check is you can just type in VIS and uncheck visible as well because we just want the position data. We don't want a random cube in our scene. Let's go ahead and take this camera, hold control, and then select the cube as well. And we're going to right click, export, and we're going to export this as an FBX. We're going to call this portal composite course save. Cool. This window is going to pop up. You shouldn't have to touch anything here. Reset the default just in case anything you had selected was changed. Export. All that's done. Let's render this out from Unreal. Let's go ahead and click the clapboard on the top of our sequencer here. And we have our render getting queued, but we want to do all the fancy VFX stuff. To do that, we're going to get rid of the JPEG sequence. We're going to go ahead and add anti-aliasing. We're going to go ahead and add our color output. We're going to go ahead and add game overrides. We're going to go ahead and add 
console variables and we're going to go ahead and add an EXR sequence and we're going to add that should be all the basics for now. Next, we're going to go into our EXR sequence and set this to PIS. We need this for crypto mats. For our deferred rendering, we don't need to touch anything. For anti-aliasing, we're going to set the spatial count to 1 and the temporal sample count to 8 as a starting point. If you need more motion blur, if you have a lot more action in your scene, you might bump this up to 16 or 32. Anti-aliasing method is set to none, and we're going to override anti-aliasing. We're going to render our warm-up frames, set the render warm-up count to 32, and the engine warm-up count to 240. We're going to go to our color output, and if you don't know how to use the ACES workflow, you can go ahead and check out this tutorial up here, and we are going to enable it. And with the OCIO enabled, we're going to go into OCIO configuration, transform space, we're going to set this to linear, and then the transform destination is going to be ACES CG. Now we did technically add the console variable thing, but we're not going to add any for this tutorial. While console variables are powerful, it's not needed for every single render, and for this tutorial, we're just trying to get the basics of the VFX pipeline. So with that, let's go into game overrides. Make sure that cinematic quality settings is checked on. So if you're using a less powerful computer, this will make sure that when we hit render, it'll add all of the extra cinematic stuff like foliage flicker and stuff. It should turn that stuff off. Now, if we want to do EXRs and multi-render passes, we need to go into our settings up here and go to plugins, and we're gonna type in passes, and we're gonna see this plugin called Movie Render Queue Additional Passes. If this is not enabled, which in this project it's not, let's turn it on. It's gonna ask us, this is in beta, are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, we do. It works, it might be a little funky depending on what you're doing, but for simple stuff, it still is very powerful. So we will have to restart Unreal Engine to turn this on, but it is going to work as long as we're not going too crazy and expecting the world out of it. Let's go ahead and restart Unreal. Let's go ahead and save our project, let it do its thing, and we'll be back in just a second. Eventually. So I just restarted Unreal and I do want to confess one thing when I did restart I did lose my Unreal render settings because I didn't save them So if you're watching this tutorial make sure that you enable the plugin before you set your render settings But it doesn't take that long with that we need to now add a setting which is going to be our Object IDs limited so we're going to add this here and we're going to use everything in the scene including translucent objects and this might be things like particles or maybe even some foliage stuff because it does have masks and stuff to create that level of transparency so i just enable this and then you can either select full material actor etc i just keep this at full most of the time so with all that done let's find a place to save this so i'm going to go to my output directory and save this in a place that makes sense and i'll call this tutorial da vinci compositing course We'll save that right there, and then we'll set this at 1920 by 1080. You need to know what your final render setting is for your final composited footage, and you have to make sure that you match that. So I want to render out in 1920 by 1080, because in DaVinci, I'm going to be compositing in 1920 by 1080. Once that's done, everything should be good to go. Last thing I should mention is you want the PIS format, because for EXRs, if you don't have it set to PIS, your crypto mats might look a little weird and funky. With that said, let's go up to unsave config and we'll save this as a preset and we'll do save as and we'll call this Jags Composite Course 001. Save, and that'll save this preset for this project only. We're gonna hit accept and then we're gonna hit render and we're gonna let it go do its thing. Now we can see here that it's rendering up the warm-up frames over here and over the next however long it's gonna take, it's gonna render out the scene. And next we'll talk about the DaVinci Resolve workflow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below about something you learned in Unreal. It helps me get an idea of what people are looking to learn about Unreal and VFX motion graphics stuff. If you want to see the full breakdown of the DaVinci stuff, you can find that in my DaVinci course, which is linked in the description down below. In the course, there'll be the full video of how I'll take this into Fusion and basically composite some footage into the scene.
If you don't know much about DaVinci, fortunately the course is six hours of DaVinci Resolve content covering what buttons are actually worth pressing and what stuff you don't even need to know. It's intended for beginners who've never touched video editing software in their life and those who are coming from a motion graphics or video editing background in Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. So if you want to learn more about the course, link in the description down below, and I hope you learn something about how to get your stuff ready from Unreal into other compositing software tools. I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some games. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.